John here guys and welcome back to another exciting episode of Drone Economics where we dive into all of the micro and macro economic goings on throughout the FPV and drone industry and today we're talking about whether or not you should invest in the Orca Goggle Kickstarter. For those of you who are not familiar with Orca, they are the new exciting tech startup that has been developing a fat shark killer set of goggles for the last few years. And lately they have been showing off a rather impressive set of prototype goggles that they even have got some of the Rotorite members recently to weigh in on. All reports are that there are some excellent features available in these goggles um, that they could potentially be fat shark killers that they're going to be new technology to the industry that they're going to be amazing awesome But let's not forget, these things are not to market yet. So let's talk about whether that is a good idea. So should you sell your Fat Shark HDOs already in anticipation of these next coming of technological wonder to the FPV market? Well, maybe not so fast. Now, before I dive into this any further, I'm just going to say, I hope that this is finally a fat shark killer. I hope that this makes me want to sell my HDOs so fast that I might as well just throw them out the window. I hope that these are what we have all been waiting for to feast our eyes, the extra features, the on off switch, you know, not having to run this crazy fan plug that they've had since the beginning of time but as hopeful as we all are i do not recommend that anyone buys in on this kickstarter now the kickstarter uh, kickstarter for those who are not familiar is a crowd source funding setup to where people can invest uh, in companies and instead of a traditional investment where you would be purchasing shares of stock purchasing a partnership share, you're actually pre-purchasing an item that may come to market at a later date for a lower price. In this instance, the retail price of the Orca goggles is expected to be $750, which would make them by far the most expensive goggles on the market. Now, this Kickstarter offers a pre-purchase price of only $500. Joshua Bardwell posted on the Rotor Riot Facebook group about a week ago, week ago, about a week ago, a week ago. that uh, <laughs> he posted the question to everyone from an economic standpoint, is this a wise investment? And he even went as far as to get some um, economic advice from people on Reddit. He came up with a utility type spreadsheet that would kind of estimate what the proper buy-in price would be given the amount of certainty that you expect to have for this type of investment. Now, when I say investment, I mean, you should treat it as such because an investment you can expect to lose if things don't go well. Another word to use would be gamble. It is a gamble. And so given that it's a gamble, let's look at it from a gambling standpoint. Now I have a very close friend I've known since elementary school who is a poker player. Uh, you know, once sometimes we'll play, he actually doesn't like to play with us because he says that playing with people that don't know how to play just isn't fun and they're unpredictable and he, you, know, you can actually lose money. It's better to play with people that know how to play. But from a gambling standpoint, you gotta look at the odds. The odds are 
Uh, so what do we think the certainty is that one orca will make it to market in a proper amount of time? Now let's note they've already missed their initial ship date. Two, that it will actually be a good product. Three, that it's a good product and they don't suffer from some sort of manufacturing issue. Now we all know that an FPV the quality control being done by some of these factories that the companies selling don't necessarily have control over is not always stellar. Even such bulletproof items like the Hyperlite F4 OSD in version 2.1 or 2.2, they had a major factory issue where they mixed something up, they had to recall those boards and you know, as far as I'm concerned, that's one of the most reliable bulletproof items in FPV. So any manufacturer can suffer at any time from the, well, China messed up thing. And if they make it all past those, is there some other bug that can creep in? Now, let's not forget FPV goggles are a product that is a higher premium price and a higher level of complexity than any other product in FPV. And one of the main reasons why that is, is because you're dealing with optics. Optics are something that is not super simple to deal with. You know, back in my um, <laughs> robotics days, I worked down the hall from an optics lab. And the, you, the guys that worked in there were just, they were operating on another level one. You need people like that to help you develop something like that. In addition to the optics, you have the casing, which has to be able to prevent light leaking in to your eyeballs. You have to have all of your regular electronic switches. You have to have the module interface, the DVR, the user interface to be able to control all this stuff and so many other things. There's so many components that they're gonna have to be sourcing from different areas. In addition, the screens, they're supposed to be having these high quality, beautiful screens, but what if there's a sourcing problem? What if things are delayed? What if some other company comes along and buys them all up? What if they can't get them anymore? What are they gonna do then? These are all the things that could happen to any company at any time, but one that has not come to market yet is that particular risk. So this was my response to that, which is to say, I'm not an economist, but I have, uh, have went through an MBA program where we study a lot of business type stuff like this. That's why I have the drone economics series to try to share some of these ideas. And I really do appreciate Bardwell, Kebab, Bruce from RC Model Reviews, putting out drone economics type videos of their own to really educate you guys and get everyone involved in this type of discussion. But as I pointed out, the timing of this Kickstarter launch after the initial launch date can give some clues as to why this particular Kickstarter is very dangerous. The timing indicates that there was a deficiency in funds. They ran out of money somewhere along the way. Now, whether this is in the final stages of development, whether it was in tooling, case and packaging design, whether it was worst of all during placing that initial manufacturing order, what if they spent all their money developing the product that they didn't have any money left to order the goods to actually sell? Now, let's not forget, that's one of your most expensive points. Now, if you don't have time to spend a couple of years in graduate school to get an MBA, one of the coolest ways that you can absorb some of that information, some of the business you know, sense is watch the show Shark Tank. And if you've watched that show, yes, it's entertaining to see the, the startup people get lambasted by the sharks, but one of the questions they always ask are, what are your sales? What are your sales? What are your sales? Prove to me the market cares. Yeah, let's talk about the economics. Give us your sales. Okay, we are going into production in six oh, weeks. Oh, there are no sales. That indicates, do people actually want this? Is it a product that competes with all the others? That's something that's, un, you know, it, does, it remains yet to be seen. We hope that it's gonna be good, but we don't know. Two, you know, <laughs> What is the cost? We don't know what their cost is gonna be, but let's say that they have a pretty good margin 
and their cost is like $400. So they have a margin of $350 that would be able to be split between the distributors and themselves. That's a nice healthy margin guys. But if they need to make 10,000 units at $400 a piece, so you can see where that initial uh, amount of capital to get the, pro the ball rolling is very, very high. So basically all the Orca stuff, you know, if these guys are not your brother, your mother, your best friend, your kid, you know, you, you don't want to be just forking over $500 because you could get nothing. It's a bet. And that bet of betting $500 to essentially win $250 worth of savings is risky. That two to one odds in favor of the house is really something that you would bet on a more sure thing. This is the kind of bet you would bet on a 19-year-old Mike Tyson. Is he going to knock the next guy out? Steps forward. Let's go with a couple of lefts. Now a right, a left. He's got him down. Mike Tyson sends Mike Jamison to the... Of course he is. So you're willing to bet more then you stand to win because the odds are just so good. This is the type of bet you would want to make. You know, are the Golden State Warriors going to win the championship if Durant mysteriously heals before the finals? A sure thing. Two to one odds. Uh, I, as, as optimistic as I am for Orca, I cannot call them a sure thing. So I don't recommend that you plop down your $500 unless you can afford to just lose it. Um, so you might get lucky. You might. You might get lucky. You might win. You might save that $250. But it's a danger because if Orca didn't have that money to cross the finish line of this, you know, bringing this product to market, it's a sign of danger that they could be at risk and your money could be at risk if you fork it over. Not to mention the fact that guys, all first generation products, even you know in the hands of sony apple samsung people that are you know super savvy at manufacturing all have first generation manufacturing issues guys somebody that's never done it before in this market class i mean what can we expect so in general i don't advise anyone to get involved in any kickstarter that's involved in any sort of tech space we've had so many failed kickstarters in the drone space so many of these amazing super you know smart drones that are going to come out that people wasted their money on that never got a single thing you know you might as well just throw it up fly it up with your quad and dump it into a river because it's going to be gone um that being said i want this to be successful I hope that I'm wrong. I hope that this ends up being the best goggle that we've ever seen in the hobby. I hope that I end up spending a full $750. I hope that I lose that $250 gamble. I'll gladly pay that if it ends up solving a lot of the issues that these fat sarks have. These are a great set of goggles. They represent the best that we have today, but there's still so many shortcomings. And why is that? It's because Fast Shark has such a dominant hold on this market space that they can essentially dole out incremental tiny updates without so much as changing the case, changing the power button, changing the, the fan. Oh, don't even get me started, guys. We want this to be good. So please don't, don't spend your money on the Kickstarter, but do cheer them on. Be supportive of them. Rich from Hyperlow pointed out that, you know, not all Kickstarters are to get funds at the, at the last minute. It can also be to raise awareness, get some free promotion out there. So let's hope that that's the case here. Let's hope that they're about to start shipping tomorrow and we just don't know. Let's hope that as the manufacturer, there's somebody from the company that's responded to this, that made some good points that were way off, we, that we don't know what we're talking about as a community when we doubt them. Let's hope that they're right. We're rooting for you, Orca. Don't take this personal, it's just business. We'll gladly put in $750 if you bring the correct product to market. Thanks guys. It's not personal, Sonny. It's strictly business.